Hello everyone, today we're going to learn about how we can handle all the generated uh, custom VM products uh, that your um, this app will produce over time. So every time a customer uh, will go through the go on a Neon app and um, create a product and add it to the cart, what actually happens is uh, the app will generate a new product based on those specifications that the um, customer has selected and that you allow through all the options. So um, the reason why we do this um, is to overcome Shopify's limitation of 100 variations um, limit. That's a hard limit um, that imposes on all products and all, um, well, yeah, all, 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 almost all uh, custom product generator apps um, on Shopify do the same, uh, do the same thing literally for this reason. So that is why um, you have a, a new product uh, every time a customer adds um, to, to, to that, adds a, to, to, adds a product to their cart. So, okay, now what we can do is, there's a few things we can do in order to um, basically, um, yeah, uh, make that like, you know, process. So what will happen over time, example, this is on my um, demo store that I'm using and like, you know, I've done, I've done it, to test it a few times. You know, I've got all these um, products. So there's a few key things. Uh, first of all, what we want to do is we want to hide um, these products from actually showing on the front end um, because they're, they're generated, um, they're like, you know, custom products that are generated specifically for that customer. Um, and yeah, we don't want them showing like, you know, um, in say like the catalog and all that kind of stuff. So how did I do that? Because um, this custom me sign. This one is the one that I wanted to um, actually show you, even though I haven't got an image for it now. Um, just example, that's actually that one there. Um, but uh, I'm hiding all the others. Um, so how do we do this? First of all, we go to collections. And for each collection, what you want to do is you want to go to make sure that the um, product type uh, is not equal to um, custom neon. So um, that you can add conditions um, on your collections by doing that. Um, I'll just go and create a new collection just for the sake of like, let's just say, let's call it Neon Stitch. Um, you can go, uh, yeah, you can go product type and then you go is not equal to um, and then custom Neon. And that will make sure um, that the uh, generated products um, are hidden from those uh, collections from now on. So that's the first step. I won't, I won't save this um, collection, obviously. Um, now, we, so the second step is we've got these products. Um, what we can do is we can uh, basically delete them like routinely, um, uh, you know, using a, there's another app called Mechanic. Um, and I will probably include instructions in a separate video about how to set that up. So what we've done for, um, uh, what, what I've seen previous, uh, client or merchants do is they basically, um, set up this, uh, app, uh, and add a script that basically after one month, it will just wipe out these products. Um, so, and that was like based on the tag. So it goes through the list and if the tag equals, uh, or sorry, if the product type equals, um, custom neon, they'll just, um, wipe it out, uh, delete it. Sorry. Um, so that's a destructive behavior, um, that you could incorporate to remove them. Um, the other thing you, what you want to consider too is certain, uh, sometimes what happens is you can actually use these for remarketing um, through uh, basically through abandoned checkouts. So if the customer, I haven't got one right here, right? But what I wanted to describe is if a customer goes through um, and goes through to the checkout and actually um, halfway finishes the checkout. So what that means is they're just going here. They just just, for the sake of demonstration, they have to bag, it generates the image, creates a product. And then we uh, basically, they go to checkout, right? And they start entering the information. 
So they enter the email address um, and they go continue. And uh, after it finishes details, what happens is in Shopify, um, it's saved as a band checkout. So what you can do then is you can then remarket that actual um, product. Now there's a lot of apps that allow you to remarket to people, um, to your customers that haven't done band checkout. I won't go through the process of how to do that, but I'll just say that, um, you know, it's a good process to <clears throat> um, basically email them and say, hey, you've left your product um, in the cart, you know, uh, we've still got it for you. Um, and maybe offer some kind of incentive after a couple of emails to see if they can, you can convert them. Um, so it's a good reason, it's a good um, idea to actually um, keep these uh, products around for a little bit of time before you go ahead and delete them um, for purely remarketing purposes and trying to um, recuperate um, that, that, that uh, loss of sale. So what also happens is when a product is purchased, you wanna keep it, right? So the way you can identify that is we tag, um, this, so this is a product that has been purchased. Um, we tag the product with NPC ordered, NPC underscore ordered. So this is the um, identifier that you would use in order to basically ensure that you um, don't delete uh, these products. Um, yeah, because uh, they've been purchased. So I've gone through basically, you know, how to hide the um, all the generated products. I've gone through what you should be doing um, or like a really good idea um, in order to basically uh, get those products that have been generated and see if they can convert into a sale. Um, and then also talking about, um, you know, what, what products or what versions of the um, custom game products to keep um, because they have been purchased. So I hope this um, answers uh, all your questions about how to manage uh, basically, yeah, um, all the generated Neo products um, that will be, uh, you know, carrying on your store. Thank you very much and have a good day.